Well, welcome to carols. Who likes being in Christmas time? Why don't we stand to our feet? We're going to have a big cheer for Christmas. Why don't you stand to your feet? One, two, three. Yeah, it's Christmas time. And I just love Christmas. Can I just shout out, what's your most favourite thing about Christmas? Ham. Ham. Who likes ham? Give me a yell out for ham lovers. Woo. Especially if you work down there, road, you should like ham. What else? Presents. Put, give us a cheer if you like your presents. Yeah. Yeah. What other things are like about Christmas? Someone tell me. Jesus. Jesus. That's a great answer. You go straight to the top. Yeah. What else do we have? Grandchildren. Grandchildren. Yeah, I don't want grandchildren. Ice cream. <laughs> ice cream. Do you like ice cream? <laughs> yep. No. <laughs> Bit shy. Who else loves their grandchildren? Isn't it, isn't it that yeah, as a grandparent, you know, you can just spoil your kids, spoil your grandkids, and you just get to go home? No, don't spoil them. Just love them. What else about Christmas do we love? Carols. Who's got the loudest singing voice? Someone give me their highest note. Oh, yeah. Oh, I heard a high note over there. Give us that high note again. That's pretty high. Give us your lowest note. No. So now we've got all the bad singing out of the way. We're going we're gonna to invite the team to come and lead us in carols. And during the night, you might have to throw some around some of your uh, LED things. And we've got some special prezzies. Uh, oh, sorry. We'll get some special things for the kids later on, um, and that will be wonderful too. So why don't we just give a big cheer uh, to the highway singers and the, and the band tonight as they lead us. Come on, give them a cheer. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Sing along, let her receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven nature sing.
for singing, everyone. Marty, why don't we take this moment, just like Mary in the Christmas story, I'm sure that when she saw baby Jesus that very first time, it was amazing and she had joy in her heart. How did you feel when you first saw your son? Well, um, for the first time that my son was born and for the very first time that I've been held him in my arms, I was literally crying, like, you know, the tears of happiness, the, the tears of joy. Like, I just can't believe how big the blessing that God gave it to me. Like, my son, like, he trusts me to look after his child for me. Beautiful. And it's the same for me when we had our boys. Amazing. Yeah, well, how I think I cried too. Is. Tears of joy. Joy to the world. Amen. Awesome. Beautiful singing. The next song we're going to sing, um, Gloria in Excelsius Deo is one of the lines. And if you don't know, that means glory to God in the highest. And when the angel came to the shepherds and was telling the people glory to God in the highest, they started singing along with the angels in heaven. And we'd love for you to sing along with us tonight now. Glory to God in the highest. Angels we have heard on high Sweetly singing o'er the plains And the mountains in reply Echoing their joyous strains As I reflect on this next carol, I remember that this is the only carol that was written and composed 
to be played on guitar. And as a musician who plays guitar, this, this strikes a chord with me. And, and I'm sorry for the pun. <laughs> it was a time of crisis in the little village of Obendorf. The church organ had broken down and a, and a Christmas service was scheduled for that evening. The village priest was a, an accomplished guitarist and he had composed some lyrics. And so he went to his friend and organist for help for a melody and the carol Silent Night was born this world is in a time of crisis and Christ has come into this crisis not with the glare and cacophony of a royal or presidential arrival but he was born into a lowly and humble family, into a world with ordinary people with hearts that are ready to love and receive him. Silent night. An infant came so meek and mild to change the world, this holy child. A babe so fair, a gift foretold, the promise sealed, we now behold. With saving grace and quiet might, his glory rests. This silent night.
when we read when we read when we read the Christmas story in the scriptures the angel appears to Joseph the soon to be husband of Mary the angel appears to Mary the angel an angel appears many times and the first word spoken is do not be afraid and the angel Gabriel to John the Baptist dad said don't be afraid like just I'm telling you this is what's going to happen the night that Jesus was born the angel said fear not and I believe the spirit of Christmas is not it's the absence of fear with Jesus comes perfection and no doubt no fear we rest on these words of the angel fear not good tidings are here glad tidings the shepherds then came to adore this new baby their rescuer we're going to sing oh come let us adore him and let's reflect on that first moment where they saw the babe rest on those words fear not your savior is here
fantastic. Who's having a great time? I'm hearing some beautiful singing out there. I think it's time that we do something for the children. What do you think? I think we should definitely do something for the children. So what I've done is I've organised some people to bring out a box on each side and they're going to stand here at the front and if you have children who are in primary school and under which includes the bubbers then we'd like to invite you tonight as a gift from highway church to come on up the front and receive a gift so bruce is ready if you've got kids primary school any from and under come on down and receive a gift and liz is going to be here shortly on this side And while that's happening tonight, we didn't forget you older people because we know you like to receive things as well. Who's got a glow stick? Did you get a glow stick? Good. So I want to see some waving and lots of fun engaging happening. But we've got some teenagers who would like to come around and give you a lollipop if you'd like one. But you can't put that in your mouth while we're singing because you've got to sing along. We want to hear you singing. So tonight, enjoy. Enjoy. So how are we going, kids? Is everyone getting something? Even the bubbers. Make sure the bubbers come forward and get a prezi. Isn't the team doing a fantastic job? They are doing a brilliant job. Good job. Thank you. Good singing, everyone. How are we going? Well done. I think we're nearly done. The lollies are coming around. Hope you enjoy those little prezzies and those Christmas treats, kids. We just think you're amazing and we love you. We think you're awesome. So we're going to sing a song about Hark the Herald Angels Sing. And angels sing, Kim. Just like all these beautiful angels have been singing. Fantastic. Can you imagine what it would have been like when the Herald Angels started singing, you know, Glory to the Newborn King? You know, it would have just been amazing to be there in the middle of all of that. Angelic like you. So I think it's like, listen up, hark. Mark, why don't you stand and sing with us? We want to hear you sing. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reign Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the skies With angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the new
light and life to all he brings risen with healing in his wings of hope and a new morn. So your year this year may not have turned out how you thought it was going to be, but have hope. One of the great things that God has given us is hope. Hope for a new day, a new morn, a new year, a new 2021. The stars are brightly shining, it is the night of our dear Saviour's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining, till He appeared and the soul felt its worth. Our thrill Rejoices for yonder praise a new 
O come, O come, Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. When the Israelites, way back in their time, they, they were waiting for the Messiah to come. They were waiting to be rescued. Then a virgin was going to conceive. And she was going to have a son. And this son was going to be called Emmanuel. So Jesus Christ is here with us and with us now.
the first Noel. We sing these words over and over and over again every Christmas. But do we know what we are singing? Now, the word Noel has always been associated with a a joyous announcement or or a proclamation. But if we go back and we look into the ancient Latin text, which the song was written in, we find out that Noel means to be born. So it all makes sense. The angels are singing to the world, Noel, Noel, Jesus is born. Jesus is born. The first Noel the angels did say was to certain poor shepherds in fields as they lay. In fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep. Noel, 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 born is the King of Israel. Noel, 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 born is the King. Shining in the east beyond them far And to the earth it gave great light And so it continued both day and night Noel, 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 Noel King of Israel, Noel, 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 born is the King of Israel, Noel, 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 born is the King. myself. Christy, why in the name of one horse open sleighs are you so busy making Christmas bread when you run your own cupcake business? Well, every year I like to mix things up a little bit and make an exception for these beauties. So, why Christmas bread? Well, I have been told that my Christmas bread is the confectionery manifestation of heaven. Does that sound bragging? I don't mean for it to. It's just what I've been told. Baking contest blue ribbons, don't lie. Now, there is one thing that I will never, mark my words, never make in my cupcake shop, for it is a horrible, treacherous Christmas abomination. Fruitcake. I mean, first of all, just no. (laughs) Second of all, No, I mean, does it even need to be said? You either want fruit or cake. 
I personally do not want both at the same time. I mean, you might as well make a drink called orange toothpaste juice. <laughs> Anywho, growing up, I learned the art of baking from my mama. She would make loaves of this very bread and then wrap them up in beautiful boxes that stacked as high as our Christmas tree. And then I'd get to help her deliver them all over our neighborhood. People love to see her coming. Especially our neighbor, Miss June, sweetest little old lady, like to talk to mailboxes. Now, when baking for others, my mama taught me that you pray for each person or family as you bake. I know, I know, this is bread is probably not gonna change somebody's life forever, but who knows, right? After all, big things can come from really little places, like my Aunt Gert, big haired, tiny woman. Drove a semi truck till she was 82 years old. If you looked in your rear view mirror, you'd just see two knuckles and a bouffant. Anywho, like Bethlehem, for instance. Nobody thought a thing about that little old place until Jesus came and just blew the doors right off. <laughs> oh, and listen to this. <coughs> now, I may be denser than Papa's peanut brittle, but I learned in church that there are actually two Bethlehems in Israel. Now, the one where Jesus was born, the one in the south, is called Bethlehem Ephrathah. Bethlehem means house of bread, and the word Ephrathah means fruitful. So, all together, the place where Jesus was born is the fruitful house of bread. Now, this is not a biblical reference to fruitcake. This is fruit bread. There is a difference. Fruitcake is better suited to anchor a boat than to usher in the birth of a king. Isn't that great? Little old Bethlehem, chosen to be the place where God's son, the biggest gift in a tiny body, would draw his very first human breath. What a perfect recipe for mankind. <laughs> the bread of life. So let's not get all caught up in the holly jolliness of gift giving without really receiving the main gift or the main ingredient. Can you imagine forgetting the main ingredient? I shudder to think of it. Well, like this sugar here. Well, if I were to forget the sugar, then we would have a Christmas calamity on our hands. Well, without the sugar, I... Well, I'll be a snowflake in July. It seems that I have substituted the salt for the sugar all this time. Oh, holy handbells. I have made something worse than fruitcake. Um, one of the reasons why I, uh, I selected Christy uh, for tonight, because she shares the same hateful disgust I have for fruitcake. And uh, when I was growing up, uh, my mum used to try and feed me fruitcake. And uh, I don't know, it's like trying to feed, uh, you know, a seven-year-old boy pumpkin. And you know, like my mum was funny like that. She used to try and hide the pumpkin in my smashed potato. Did your mum do that? I, I, I'm yet to, some mums, I'm yet to find another mum who did that, but I'm like, mum, you can't hide the orange mashed pumpkin in the potato. Uh, just like, please don't show, now I can guarantee you, my mum is gonna have fruitcake uh, on Christmas day. Um, and, uh, but I don't know about you, uh, at Christmas time, there's always something it doesn't matter whether um, you come from a Christian background or, or what sort of religious uh, background you had at Christmas time. There is always something that makes it Christmas. Um, for my mum, you know, she grew up that her mum made fruitcake. But her mum used to load it full of brandy. Uh, and, uh, you know, so at my mum's house growing up, it was like party time. Uh, but grow, growing up, she couldn't feed it to us kids, so she'd get out the pavlova. 
So to this day, uh, every time I eat pavlova, I think it's Christmas. It's just, it's, that's just Christmas uh, to me. And without it, there's something missing about Christmas. Do you know what, uh, Joe? I think uh, my wife, she's been lamenting. Our oldest son has left home recently. And, uh, and it was possibly going to be um, our first Christmas uh, without all of our uh, kids together um, for Christmas. Um, however, we've made arrangements and we're still hoping that our son will arrive. It may be a bit dubious, but we are hoping for it to happen. But growing up, my family, the best, it's not Christmas without two little boys expectantly waiting to rip open the Christmas presents. You know, sometimes in life, we can get around life thinking there may be just something missing. Is there something missing in your life? I don't know, this year we've had a, 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 a long time to reflect. But it's interesting how Christy, you know, she, uh, the salt in the cooking, we all know, right, you've got to put the sugar in. And how one small thing can make such a big difference in our lives. And uh, I just, I think of a great miracle of Jesus. Maybe you know the story. I hope you do. People are following Jesus out upon a mountainside and there's over 5,000 people that have followed Jesus. Jesus draws a crowd, a huge crowd. And they're out in the bush and there is nowhere to eat. There's no, no food around. They've all got to travel a significant journey back to the city and they're in this dilemma. But there is a boy. John, uh, in the history, in the Gospel of John, he says this, there was a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they for so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down, about 5,000 in number. You know what Jesus does next? He takes the small amount of bread and the small amount of fish and he blesses it. He thanks, what he blesses? He thanks God for it. He says, God, thank you for the provision, even though it was only small. And so all of his disciples and the people serving the people uh, put them in baskets and they served it out that day and they served everybody. There's 5,000 men and then all their families with them as well. Something small turned into something great. You know, I was reminded today uh, of uh, the story about the Titanic. What a great disaster. It was supposed to be the, yeah, it was the biggest ship. It did that uh, crossing and, and it was luxurious and it was beautiful. It was going to change the face of luxury travel uh, in the world. We know the fate of the Titanic. The fate of the Titanic was it struck that iceberg and unfortunately it was lost at sea with so many people lost that day. But the interesting comment that has been made is if at the start of their journey, if they made just one degree course change, this the smallest of change, just the one degree course change on the heading, they would have never struck that iceberg. And the destinies of many, many lives would have changed that day. With a little bit of faith in Jesus tonight, you can change the tide of your life and it set you up for eternity. Maybe think about something in your life that seemed like nothing at the time, but later it made a huge difference. I wonder tonight, I'd like to pray a prayer. 
I'm going to invite us all to. But this Christmas, the greatest gift that we as a church family um, could give or that we could actually receive is faith in Jesus. It may seem like, well, we're just, we're in King Arroy, we're in a little country town in the middle of Queensland, which does it make it even on the global, you know, on the global map? Possibly not. Is this maybe just a small gathering of, of people? Is this such a significant night? Well, let me tell you, friend, for you tonight, it could be the one night, it could be the one moment, it could be the one course change, it could be the one rip, it could be the one stone in the pond that will impact your eternity. Just a little bit of faith in Jesus will change the course of your life forever. You know, Christians tonight, I'd like to say, hey, Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. I want to say to you that God wants to do great things in you. God wants to do great things in you. Oh, but I'm just a whatever you are. I'm just in King Arroy. I'm just doing this at the moment. What? A, I, no, God has got a great plan and a destiny and a purpose for each one of us. And the gift of Jesus and the gift of life and the gift of love is yours this season because of Jesus. I just invite us all. Maybe some of the people are going to maybe pray this for the very first time tonight. So we're going to all pray it together. But it's a prayer that I pray too. And we pray this regularly as a church, but we've just made this Christmas prayer tonight. Would you pray it with me together? God, I don't want to leave you out of my life. Tonight, I receive the gift of Jesus. I invite you to come into my life. This Christmas, I'm reminded that Jesus is the sole ingredient I need for eternal life. So I have decided to follow you. Amen. What a great blessing. You know, God's blessing is upon you tonight. What does that mean? It means you're His favourite. We all get to be His favourites. And so we're going to sing the blessing of God upon you, upon your family. And the singers are going to come and sing the blessing. And tonight, just receive it and know and understand that God's favour, He wants the best for you. He wants the best for your family. And it starts with a little bit of faith. May God bless you this Christmas and bring you peace. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Praise.
you know what? We've had a great night singing carols with you. And we want you to stand with us as we sing this final carol. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And that's our prayer for you. We wish you a Merry Christmas.